Yeah, brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Thank you, DigiKey. Every single weekly data looks at something new, a new product introduction that stands for NPI. I'm sorry, NPI stands for that. This week, it's Arduino. Yeah. Yes, um, this week we're going to be looking at an Arduino product, um, which is the, well, it's also in partnership with another company. Um, this is called the Arduino Opta, made with Finder, which is another Italian company that makes. Um, industrial automation equipment. And this is a PLC, a programmable logic controller that um, has, you know, it's like got Ar Arduino at heart, um, it's got Arduino guts, and it's got this uh, really industrial um, outer enclosure that's meant for mounting in a factory. Um, so you can use it to um, control robotics, um, you know, equipment, heaters, uh, measurement for buildings, measurement for factories, measurement for trains, you know, pretty much anything that is, is, you know, moving and has to do it repeatedly and um, efficiently and correctly every time. Historically, what we've used is a PLC. Um, but what's interesting about this, like I said, is this is the first time that we've had an Arduino PLC uh, from Arduino um, that has their experience in doing software and user interaction with, um, Finder's experience in making equipment uh, for the sector. And like, you know, you have to have a lot of certifications. If you go back one, actually, you'll see, um, you need certifications. You Looks need- It's like a NASCAR. Yeah, with it's like, like all the logos FCC, and like, you got this, you got this, you got this, you got this, yeah. FCC, proper earth grounding, uh, proper protection. Um, Ooh, it's GMO and trans fat free. I know, it's, it's very healthy. Okay, so historically, right, like before the Industrial Revolution, everything was made by hand. Um, and then we're like, hey, we want to make the same thing over and over again and have it be the same each time. We want the same socks. We want the same meal. We want the same medicine. And we don't want to have to, like, guess whether the person who made it did a good job. It should just be made exactly the same. Um, the problem with um, assembly lines, though, is you need to have people who will work at the same exact job hour after hour for eight hours a shift, three shifts a day, um, five to seven days a week. And this is really hard work. And a lot of it is extremely boring. It's like really repetitive. You just want to, you know, hammer a nail into the same location or tighten a screw or weld, you know, one piece of nail to the other. And so, you know, when I was a kid, I used to watch how it's made. And one of the interesting things, you know, if you're at all interested in automation engineering, this show is like so cool because you get to see factories. It's like a Midwestern voice. They're like, today we're going to look at how shovels are made. And onions. Um, so, you know, even, it's interesting is how everything, whether it's you know, medicine or food or clothing um, or like components for tractors or sensors or toys, it's all made with a very similar process. Like there is this assembly line. Uh, you see these onions are on a conveyor belt and they're like, in this case, they're being washed. Um, or this is, I think, um, hand cream. And if you look like they're going down this conveyor belt, but instead of a person, you know, picking up each jar and then scooping hand cream in or, and then applying a label, you see all these sensors and servos and motors and actuators that are detecting as each jar goes by and they apply a label, um, they weigh it automatically and it does this 24 hours a day repeatedly without mistakes. Um, it's the reason that we have affordable food, affordable medicine, affordable clothing, um, because we don't have to hand make it. You can, you know, try, you can have hand so cream. time. Yeah, it saves you a lot of time. Mm -hmm. um, and we still need people, we need engineers, and there's still people who do hand work on the line they just don't do the very repetitive stuff of putting labels on bags like we use an auto bagger now instead of hand yeah. labeling bags because it is it's really tough on your wrist to do it over and over again um but somebody has to program these machines and the way you program it is with plcs and so here's like you know diagram for the tutorials oftentimes every piece of equipment will have a plc even if it doesn't have you know you could have tons of sensors and inputs and outputs and everything but even something as simple as just like a tank, um, which has a level sensor, a serv uh, sorry, a um, relay that controls a pump, a relay that can control a um, evacuation um, slot, 
a, you know, a hole that will control, uh, sorry, a relay that will control when liquid goes in or out or different liquids or controls the heating or cooling of um, the liquid. So, you know, and this is a very common thing. No matter what industry you're in, you're going to have like tubs of liquid that you have to heat up, cool down, maintain temperature, move it from here, move it from there, um, ferment it. Um, each one will have, pardon me, a PLC attached. And the PLCs communicate with each other either over Ethernet or uh, Modbus or RS-485. So uh, what's neat is that, you know, Finder, which is a company that, um, pardon me, that worked with Arduino to design the Opta, like they have done this sort of thing for a living for a really long time. They sell relays and components and meters and pumps and stuff. And so they're really well acquainted with what the industry wants and needs. And so when Arduino comes in and they're like, hey, we're really good at doing the scripting and analog and input and output, um, you know, they work together to say like, well, how can we design something that has the best of both worlds? It has all the protected inputs and the powerful outputs, the LEDs where people expect it, the buttons where people expect it, it's, you know, rail mountable, et cetera. But what you can do is program it because inside is a, um, uh, yeah, it's the S STM32 H747XI. Yeah. Someone know, could you run CircuitPython on this? You, I, I don't know if we have the H7 supported, but my MicroPython definitely is yeah. supported by the H7 series. So I think you can run MicroPython. I, I think CircuitPython, I don't know if we did the H7 or the F7. Yeah. Um, but it's a very powerful chip. It's got a Cortex M7 and M4 running at 40 megahertz. It's got you know two megs of flash, one megabyte of RAM. And uh, also has like 16 megabytes of QSPY flash. Uh, so yeah, it would be great for running MicroPython or CircuitPython. And it's got all the analog inputs and outputs and um, it's got crypto support. It's got a real-time clock. You can get it with Ethernet, RS-485 or Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth. So there's a couple different options depending on whether you want something you know low cost or you need like Ethernet connectivity. And what's cool is with the SDM32, it's powerful enough that it can definitely handle Ethernet and do the TLS um, encryption for you um, so you get like a secure connection. Okay, and we're gonna real-time operating system. Um, yes, yeah, so these are the options. Um, you know, they, they get a little bit more expensive. The light version has Ethernet, actually, sorry, they all have Ethernet. Um, and then as you go up the scale, they get a little bit more expensive, but they're still much less expensive. Even like the highest end Wi-Fi one is about 200 bucks. So it's a pretty good deal. Um, that's not much more expensive than a dev board and you get like this super rugged PLC device. Um, so the strength of this, cause you can get PLCs on the market like Siemens, all they do is, is sell PLCs. What's cool about the Opta is like, you know, you have this analog input and like other PLCs, it does zero to 10 volt analog input. But then what you can do is upload a sketch to it in Arduino and read the analog value. And so if you want like, to use existing Arduino libraries and tutorials and stuff like averaging and filtering um, that you would want to have in C++, you can just use that. It's just like normal Arduino. Or if you want to use um, like I2C sensors, you can do that as well. And then to program it, you know, like I said, you can use Arduino and that's one way. But I, I guess you know, this is something new for me. I've never seen this kind of language before, but there's this thing called like the IAC 611 language set. And this is how traditionally PLCs have been programmed and it's a very consistent. It's like there's five different versions um, called structure test, instruction set list, ladder diagram, sequential function chart, and function block diagram. And they're all, it's kind of fascinating because they're all like really like kind of simplistic. Um, they were designed in, I think like 93 and it was like revised in 2013, but they're still like, there's, it, it moves slowly. Cause as you expect, like if you're doing this kind of industrial automation, um, you don't want to like have things that break because these robots are moving very fast. You don't want them to like mess up your food. So it's not healthy. They don't, you don't want mess to make mistakes with your medicine. So you don't get the right amount of medicine in each pill. Um, so they're, they're very constrained, which I like. Um, and if you know how to use these, so I was kind of looking, there's like one is, instruction list is like basically assembler. You set up the variables and then you can manipulate them. Structure test looks like C, but it looks a little bit like Pascal. Um, ladder diagram, so there's like diagram versions. And then um, this one, which is like this flow control. I, it's interesting, there's both graphical 
It's like it's interesting. They kind of came. I think they probably invented the assembly one first when they made their way all the way up to um, this more advanced version. And um, it, you you know, if you've worked with PLCs before, you'll probably start with this because this is what you know and love. But then as your design gets more and more complicated, maybe you would then transition to using Arduino, or you would just skip this completely. Maybe you want to use PLCs, but you're like, I'm not interested in learning this assembler language. I want to have the power. Or it's another way to interface, and maybe like you can get the data out, and then use Arduino to do IoT stuff, and then publish to uh, yeah. a dashboard or something, and then um, they also have expansions. Yes, they also have expansions. So if you want to add more I/O, they have like you can add 16 more GPIO, and I think like eight more. SSRs or electromechanical relays. So it's like kind of a, it's a flexible system yeah. for doing PLCs. In stock. It's in stock too? Yeah, and uh, they have a video and uh, it's rocking. Um, so we're gonna play the video and then we'll see you on the other side for new products. Yeah.